the next generation of consoles has already dawned upon us, with folks over at Sony and Microsoft having launched the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, respectively. Games like Bluepoint's Demon's Souls Remake and Insomniac's Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart are great showcases of Sony's hardware. The Xbox Series X might have a slight edge over Sony's machine in some facets of hardware, but games like Halo Infinite are yet to showcase the console's fullest potential. Consoles have become pretty close to PC in many ways over the years, with PS4 and Xbox One utilizing the same x86 instruction set that most desktop CPUs use, as opposed to the power PC and cell chips found in consoles like the PS3 and Xbox 360 respectively. This has, in turn, called for a number of comparisons to PCs with new consoles often being touted as the most bang for your buck, of course, owning a gaming PC or a console has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. That's undebatable. That being said, it's always interesting to validate time after time again whether claims of consoles being the ultimate way to play at a budget are indeed true. With this in mind, we try to build a PC using all new off-the-shelf components that should give performance results as close as possible or even better when compared to Sony's latest and greatest. Note, the pricing of hardware is based on what they were during the time of writing this feature, and may change in the future. Also, we have tried to include components that were close to the PS5's hardware, as it's not feasible to have a one-to-one -one component list. Before we begin, please consider subscribing and enabling all notifications by clicking the bell icon. With that out of the way, let's get started. The CPU. The PS5 uses a custom AMD CPU with 8 cores and 16 threads, running at 3.5 GHz. The CPU upgrade to next-gen consoles has remained underappreciated for some time now, as the jump from what was essentially a mobile-grade Jaguar core from the PS4 and Xbox One has a substantial impact on performance, which many gamers are utilizing to push frame rates up to 120 frames per second. For our PC of choice, we went with the Ryzen 7 3700X. Like Sony's PS5, Ryzen 7 3700X uses the same Zen 2 CPU architecture and features a total of 8 cores and 16 threads. Running at a base clock of 3.6 GHz, which can reach speeds of 4.4 GHz during heavy workloads. Furthermore, there's also overclocking support for enthusiasts, which can push these numbers even higher. We also considered the Ryzen 7 5700G, but went with the 3700X, since getting a compatible hardware for the latter is quite cheaper than the former. On the topic of price, the Ryzen 7 3700X has an MSRP of $329 and can usually be found at around the same price. The GPU. Sony's PS5 uses a custom RDNA2 GPU, which shares the same die with the CPU. It features a total of 36 CUs at 2.23 GHz to achieve 10 teraflops of power. The GPU has proven itself to be incredibly capable, with first-party games like Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart maintaining rock-solid performance levels all while filling the screen with a bevy of post-processing effects. For our PC build, we opted for an RTX 3060, which features a total of 3,584 Turing-architected CUDA cores, running at up to 1.8 GHz to achieve a raw grunt of 13 teraflops of shader performance, which is 30% higher than the PS5. The PS5's custom GPU shares a central pool of 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM with the CPU, while the RTX 3060, obviously enough, has a total of 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory to its name alone. NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling Technology, commonly abbreviated as DLSS 2.0, does the RTX 3060 great favors, as it allows games to run at high resolutions with all the graphical bells and whistles without losing much detail. The RTX 3060 is available at an MSRP of $329, although you might be hard-pressed to find a card at that seemingly very lucrative price. A multitude of reasons ranging from scalping to global silicon shortages have knocked the prices sky high, so grabbing one alone might be an exercise in pain for now. The Motherboard 
For the motherboard, you are free to choose any supported B450, B550, X570 variant from a number of manufacturers. For the sake of keeping the total price point as low as possible, we went with the ASR AUK B450M Pro 4, which claims to support the Ryzen 3000 series right out of the box, without a BIOS update, and comes with most of the basic I.O. amenities that one requires from a motherboard. It can usually be found for around $70. Of course, there are always higher priced options that allow for better upgrade paths for the future. The Memory in terms of memory, we went with a Team Group T-Force Vulcan Z 16GB kit, which features two modules of DDR4 RAM running at a frequency of 3200 MHz. A Ryzen CPU requires high-speed memory to perform at its best. And 3200 MHz is a fine balance of price and performance for now. Running in dual-channel configuration has some marginal benefits over a single channel, which is the reason behind our choice of a 2x8 kit. One could spring for a single-channel memory instead, of course. Rest assured, there will be more RAM slots available on the board either way for an easy upgrade option in the future. The T-Force Vulcan Z memory kit retails for around $70 on Amazon and should be an easy pick. The SSD the PS5 features an 825GB SSD, which operates on a PCIe 4.0 interface and boasts speeds of up to 8-9GB to nine gigabytes of compressed data. Both Sony and Microsoft have touted the SSDs to be game-changing for good reason. These SSDs are tightly coupled with other internal components, which make them more efficient and gives developers a lot more flexibility in designing engines to make full use of these toolsets. Games made for the PC platform have to account for thousands of hardware configurations, but SSDs aren't the standard just yet, more so PCIe 4.0 ones. Our choice of a Samsung 870 EVO is based around many of these more practical reasons than anything else. It's affordable, it's durable, and provides plenty of space to store next-gen games and software. A 1TB Samsung 870 EVO is available at $169 at the time of this writing. Those wanting to replace it with a PCIe 4.0 SSD, such as the Samsung 980 Pro, will also have to spring up for a higher-end B550 motherboard. The Power Supply For the power supply, we went with the $100 Corsair CX750 Watt Power Supply. This is 80 plus bronze certified and should provide enough juice to keep all the components running at max TDP. Of course, this goes without saying, don't cheap out on a power supply. The last thing a newly built system needs is a motherboard shortage caused by some cheap and unreliable power supply. The Cabinet For the cabinet, we went with a Thermaltake S100, which features a tempered glass side panel and a 120mm rear fan. It gets the job done, and at a price point of $70, it's one of the best out there. Total price and what about Blu-ray drive, OS, and peripherals? The total price of our proposed build comes at around $1,137, which is almost two times the price of a PS5. A point worth noting here is that we haven't included a Blu-ray drive, a fresh copy of Windows 10 and peripherals, and all of this can bump up this build's price to an even higher number. PC gamers mostly download games digitally, so a Blu-ray drive isn't really required from a gaming perspective. That being said, this configuration should handle almost all of the latest games at a resolution of 4K with respectable settings at comfortable frame rates. For games that prove too demanding for the system at the resolution, supported games can utilize DLSS 2.0 to help achieve better performance results. All in all, it's a lot more flexible and powerful machine than Sony's offerings, albeit with a hefty price premium attached to it. Sony uses custom components for its hardware, which is produced at a massive scale, which, by extension, allows it to reach such an enticing price point. Xbox recently revealed that console hardware rarely nets the company's any profits, citing that software royalties and sales contribute to that front instead. Of course, as the generation progresses and newer generations of CPUs and GPUs provide more horsepower for the same price, 
or hardware as used in our proposed build becomes older and by extension cheaper, the gap will narrow down by a great margin, as it always has in the past. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.